Okay, so we've now got the deflected shape that goes with the moment diagram and illustrating the discontinuity in the um, <clears throat> slope at the hinge as well as the transverse displacement at the hinge. Now this gets a little hairy. This isn't the easiest uh, item to go figure out all these kinds of details. So let's dig into the strategy of how this all might work. Now remember, and you see a simply supported kind of segment, you almost always, 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 almost always want to draw a tangent that goes from support to support. Now we're trying to figure out what happens at the hinge, so why don't we take a tangent at P and draw it all the way across from support to support and see what we end up with. Note that the slope that we get or the rotation at B is right here. Of course, this is the tangent at B. And from then, the fact that we go all the way across, we can get that angle, which sets up similar triangles. By looking at this tangential deviation, that's T at C with respect to B. So that's a big thing right off the bat. Now what also we should take note of is then that means that the displacement at the hinge is going to be a part composed of two parts. And that is that delta D displacement at the hinge is going to be equal to this little similar triangle business. right? So 5 feet compared to the 25 feet here, then this little piece is going to be a lot smaller. It's going to be 1 fifth of what this was out here, the TCB. And then we can see that we've got this additional little curvature piece, so plus the tangential deviation that happens at D relative to a tangent that was drawn back at B, which is still the same overall tangent. So we got two pieces that comprise that displacement. So strategy-wise, that's the uh, first part of this. Now the next part, and that's actually not so uh, difficult. That just involves, of course, this first moment of area business. And you're, for TCB, you're going to get this area here, right? And you're going to take that first moment with respect to the point of interest. So that's this distance here. That's two thirds of 25 feet, <coughs> right? So that's one half base times height. So this, this is TCB. That's going to be then. Quite catch all of this on the page at the same time, but you can pause and go back and forth if you want. But that area, that triangle, is one half of the 25 feet times the height, which is minus 50 kip foot, times that moment arm of two thirds and 20 times 25 feet. Now that minus sign is going to uh, be there to tell us that we're actually going down from the tangent at B. That's why that's that's happening like that, which we could have observed. So, you know, we really could have just ignored that minus sign if we had wanted to um, from that kind of perspective. And then, let's see, the TD at B is going to be a similar kind of thing. We've got a little piece here. We know that that's only five foot over, and uh, this is the tangential deviation of D with respect to B, so we're going that way for the moment arm. So that means that we've got one half of the base of five feet times the height of minus 50 kip foot times the um, two thirds of five feet to get that particular moment arm. Right, so that's how we, we go about getting those just the delta D. Now that, what that doesn't give for us though is what's going on with this slope right here. And the way we're going to get that is by noting two things. One, if we take a tangent at D, that's this one right here, tangent at D, then the relative angle change, that's this little guy in here or this little guy in there, either one you want to uh, look at, that that slope at D to the right of the hinge is going to be equal to the slope at B plus theta D with respect to B. Right? It's that whole big angle that's in here. 
right? And we can do that without regard to sine. It's a very straightforward case, so we don't have to be so focused on the sine here. Theta b, of course, was equal to the opposite over adjacent. It's really tangent, right? But because that will work out in terms of radians to be so small, we don't really have to be that focused on uh, taking the tangent. Plus then the theta db. Now that's a relative angle change, angular deviation. That's just the area under the m over ei diagram between those two points. So that's one half of the 25 feet times the 50 feet foot. Notice I'm kind of just not fussing here with the, the minus signs. I'm going to take absolute values here because again we can see directly how the two things sum together and uh, so we can be sort of straightforward about that. So that will give us the slope to the right of the hinge. Now we got to figure out what goes on at the left and that's a little bit trickier to have to try to figure out. Right? Because now, gee, what are we what are we going to end up with here? Well, now when we go draw our tangents, say that, well, we could do this a lot of different ways. Right? If we drew the tangent at A, why would that be useful? Well, there's a right triangle that's formed over this whole height. So there's your tangential deviation at D with respect to A. Okay, So that would be the first moment of this triangle here. Sorry, this triangle right here, which is symmetric, right? It's 10 foot, 10 foot. And so we could deal with that, and we can get that little piece. And But we'll have to add to it here that theta A would be equal to opposite over adjacent. So that would be TDA plus the displacement at D, all divided by then that 20 feet. That is that portion right there. That would tell us theta A, right? And then I know what we got here a tangent at D to the left, right? We got two different ones that we're playing with. And that relative angle change is then theta. B with respect, oops, sorry, D with respect to A, right? Because we cannot go across the hinge. We can only go up to it, right? And so that would be just one half of the 100 uh, kip foot. I've forgotten to divide all of these by EI, haven't I? So you know how we fix that since it's a constant EI? We pull them all out to the left side. We just factor it over. And it's a little clever way to handle that EI business. Right. So let's go back one half, 100 times the 20 feet. That would be, that's 100 kip foot. And so that would be one, well, that's an easy one. That's 1,000 kip foot squared. Notice the different units here. Kip feet cubed when we were talking about tangential deviations and then divide by EI. And so the, we got one derivative here with respect to x. So to get to slopes, so that's why going from displacement to slopes, you lose one of the length units. And so that gives us theta d with respect to a, and we have to think about what the angle of that is going to be. You know, one of them, theta a, actually goes down, so that would actually turn out to be uh, clockwise. This is going to turn out to be counterclockwise, so that when we want, then finally, theta d to the left, we're going to end up taking the big angle. That is, let's see, counterclockwise, that would be the theta A business, and subtracting off the difference here. And, you know, how, how do you want to do this? This is really a negative slope, so let's put it as a negative, and then we'll add in then EI theta D with respect to A. Put all the numbers in, but that's your strategy about how you're going to go about getting then these two rotations. And, of course, what we want is the discontinuity. That would be the difference. Um, between those. So we just take then theta d to the right, subtract off theta d to the left, and that will be our answer um, as a function of EI for that particular quantity.